Good morning, colleagues. It's lovely to be back. And also to, to be back starting with, with something that is um, almost overdue in terms of us discussing this as an institutional issue. Um, when, when I reflected on this, I realized that um, one of the, the messages I would, I would like us to explore and the approaches, and I took it back to my own work in fintech law and regulation and how we look at uh, emerging technology and how it impacts on the kinds of um, financial services and, and other kinds of interactions uh, that we have with technology within the financial sector. And having explored this um, quite a few times, if one looks at regulation, and, and my fear is that because people are fearful of chat GPT, uh, of, which is just one form of AI, there are even more advanced forms, um, that we might be tempted as a university to immediately think how we are going to prohibit that. So when it comes to regulation, there are three uh, approaches. So when I ask myself to regulate or not, I look at the following. Number one, total prohibition. Now, our research has shown if you go for total prohibition, all you do is to drive it underground, which means that it will still be used, it will, it will become even more sophisticated, and you would not be able to, to regulate. The far end of that is a laissez-faire, uh, approach to regulation, which is everything goes, it can go unlimited, um, and uh, you don't need to do anything uh, 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 around it, and then you have to deal with the consequences of when it has been dealt with unethically. In my experience, the middle road is always the best one where you ask the following questions. If this technology is being used what is the ambit of that technology or the kind of benefits that it can bring to the system? And what are the kind of risks that can be posed? So when you do a gap analysis of, of, of those, asking the hard questions around, would it be possible, for example, to use this and train up our students and our staff as a kind of tool in our learning and teaching in the way in which we do research, but then, for example, through our assessment become much more critical. Could even, just an example, use AI pre-prepared by chat GPT as an assignment and ask the students to be critical um, around what, a, what a chat GPT or whether it's being or even more advanced Jasper, what, what that has uh, delivered. So if you look at the middle road, then you weigh up what the benefits are and what are those risks. And when the risks uh, outweigh the benefits, then there's an indication that some form of regulation would be necessary. And I think we as an institution, if that is the route, the middle route that we follow, then we really need to post this colloquium uh, we really need to have, I think, a, a, a small task team of, of people that are very knowledgeable in this and see how we can actually leverage the power of AI for the benefit of our learning and teaching project, but also look at the kinds of principles that would be important that we all adhere to. And in a sense, if I think back, back of how we dealt with COVID, uh, we had high-level principles on... I remember our contingency plan. Uh, we worked out high level principles on our assessment. Um, we even had um, data like Dr. Uh, Sultan Camp, you will remember, we even had principles for data like. So for me, I don't see AI as another threat, but rather as an opportunity for us as a university to explore how best we can incorporate, but then also look at a way in which we have common principles that we agree on or guidelines that will that will serve us well. And I do hope that um, the policing of it and how we deal with plagiarism should not be the upfront thing that we are talking about, but rather how do we infuse this within our uh, learning and teaching, not only undergraduate, postgraduate, um, and maybe just to, to um, end with the following. One of my master's students uh, did a very interesting um, master's, he graduated already, on AI, the use of AI 
to take decisions on corporate boards and it wrote a brilliant uh, and, and also arguing for, um, for corporate law reform because of the fact that there could be benefits and that you could one day have a bot sitting next to a human on a corporate board. So I'm leaving you with those kind of, and we're exploring all sorts of weird and wonderful things around AI and the detection uh, investigation of um, anti-mining laundering, um, combating of fa financing of terrorism at the moment and, and proliferation funding, which is the funding of weapons of mass destruction. Now that is just my field, but this can actually be explored um, uh, in, in a very innovative way. And that's what I'm hoping that we will achieve, uh, Dr. Stoltenkamp, and that post today, that you will drive this in the institution and that we would hopefully, uh, via SAP or SLTC, have a kind of a, a crossover um, a task team that can get us to an institutional position. Thank you, colleagues, and enjoy the day. I'll be following you from the office.